Well, good afternoon to all of us on the East Coast and in Central Time. And I want to say good morning to all of you who are in Mountain Time and on Western Time. Welcome to our National Office Ministry Maundy Thursday worship service. I'm so grateful that you've taken the time out of your busy schedule to be a part of this very special worship experience where we kick off a holy weekend for our faith, commemorating the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. On today, on this Holy Thursday, the Thursday before Easter, we commemorate um, when Jesus took the time to wash his disciples' feet. And also we commemorate the last supper that he had with his disciples. It's our expression of love towards one another and remembering the ultimate price and love that God has for us expressed through the teachings of Jesus Christ. On today, we have a very special experience prepared for you. But before we start our experience, since we can't be together in person due to the pandemic we're in, I wanna open our service with a word of prayer and then we'll go into the order of service. Let's pray together. God, we thank you for this very special occasion where we can worship the sacrifice that you've made for each and every single one of us. We thank you for all of us who are tuning in from different parts of the country. We're watching from our offices, we're watching from our homes, we're even watching from being out and about. But God, we pray that we would experience your love through this service as we commemorate your supper, the last supper, that you say as often as we do this to remember you, as we commemorate the love that you showed your disciples through the practice of washing feet, and as we commemorate more more importantly, your death, burial, and resurrection. So we ask your blessing on this service. We ask that you would bless every component of it. It's in your holy name we pray. Amen. Well, um, in this service, you're going to experience scripture reading. You're going to experience great musical selections. And most importantly, you're going to experience a special message from our national president and CEO, Mike King. Um, but let's kick this service off as we go into our scripture reading from Minister Teresa Alfaro and Miss Sophie Berry from our National Office Ministry Department. A reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verses 34 through 35. Lectura del Santo Evangelio según San Juan, capítulo 13, versículo 34 al 35. A new command I give you. Este mandamiento nuevo les doy. Love one another. Que se amen los unos a los otros. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. Así como yo los he amado, también ustedes deben amarse los unos a los otros. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. De este modo, todos sabrán que son mis discípulos, si se aman los unos a los otros. Oh, I spoke when you were singing over me. You've been so, so good to me Boy, I took a breath You breathed your life in me You've been so, so kind to me Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love Don't 
Thank you. Thanks to all of you for joining this Monday Thursday service, this special service. I want to really give a special thanks to the ministry team, James Marshall and his whole crew, his whole crew, Sophie, Don, Corey. Thanks to all of you for working so hard on this. It is so meaningful to us as an organization, to us as our church without walls. And it's meaningful, especially this year. That's what I wanted to talk with you a little bit about today in the message is really how it is so different this year. The context that we're working within this year, within the context of having been through a year now of a pandemic and literally the issues that we've all had to face, the issues that we've all dealt with are, are, are quite different. I've never seen a time when we needed the holiday season, the holy season, the Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Easter Sunday more then we need it right now. Then we need it right now to really get into our faith, use that. Literally, the people who have not had the illness have had incredible distress and stress and fear throughout the year, as well as, of course, those who have had the illness. So it's, it, it's amazing. It seems like our entire nation has been going through almost a state of depression as we have dealt with this, and truly the entire world. I know for a fact that everyone is fatigued. Everyone is so fatigued at having to reinvent themselves and reinvent everything they say and do virtually every day. It's taken a lot out of everyone. Right now, right now, at this point in time, we need a timeout. We need a timeout to truly, truly restore and reclaim our faith. And with that word reclaim, I want to share with you some comments that I read just last weekend. The CEO of Delta Airlines commented about everyone really seems anxious to reclaim their lives. Everyone seems really anxious to reclaim their lives. I think he was absolutely right, absolutely right. There's been an amazing effort about that, and there's an anxiousness about that. Literally just hours after I read this online, this comment from the CEO of Delta Airlines, I had a conversation with one of my sons, and it was my son that I literally officiated his wedding on March 15th of 2020, literally the day that the nation began shutting down. And it began shutting down right in the midst of the wedding. Uh, literally, the restaurant where the reception and dinner was supposed to be held afterwards shut down, literally. Shut down the day of the wedding, and everything had to be changed and moved. They had to change their whole lives. My son and daughter-in-law are in their late 30s. They were pretty anxious to start having kids because they're worried about hitting that 40 mark and all of that. And now here a year later, they're really, you know, no honeymoon, no anything quarantined virtually for a year. They're really trying to evaluate what does their life plan now look like? 
and they were absolutely ready to reclaim their lives. I got a wonderful example of this in a personal level just shortly after reading it. I think that's where we are now. I think that's exactly where we are, that literally as a church without walls, Volunteers of America has this need now to have this time out. And it is a desperate need. So in that spirit, in that spirit, let's use this Monday Thursday observance as a way of beginning, beginning your own personal rebirth, your own personal reclaiming through your faith, going there first. It starts internally before it goes external. This is truly the spiritual force celebrating Christ's sacrifice and Christ's resurrection. It's the spiritual force that can take us to that next level. It truly is the most powerful moment in the history of mankind is celebrating the resurrection of Christ. It changed mankind forevermore. And so as we go through the holy days, as we go through the events of Monday Thursday, Let's use that as our process to reclaim our faith, reclaim ourselves, restore ourselves from a spiritual side first, internally. And starting first with what happened on that day, on that Monday, Thursday. It was an amazing day where Christ truly gave us examples, examples that he lived out knowing what his fate was. That's what makes it so amazing. Literally 2,000 years ago today, he began that evening, that last evening with his disciples by washing their feet, literally washing their feet. And this was no simple task. It's not like what happens today when we wash our feet. My biggest concern would be, Jesus, I hope he doesn't see my toe fungus, okay? I had bigger concerns back then, bigger concerns back then because there were no sidewalks, there were no streets. Your feet were filthy. This is how he started. It shocked his disciples. There were awkward moments in that moment, especially by Peter. But literally, the humility was what he wanted to demonstrate and truly set an example for them to then follow after he is gone because he knew, he knew what was going to happen over the next 48 hours, that he would be gone. And he was more laying the groundwork for their ministry and for the ministry that would change the world going forward. That humility set the stage for all of us to follow, all of us to follow. Really amazing. And going from that into the Lord's Supper the Eucharist, which we still practice today and will be practicing in this worship service today. An amazing moment, but it foreshadowed literally meals following his resurrection as we perform this in our own worship services and also literally was a metaphor, if you will, for the heavenly banquet, if you will, what happens after, after we pass and because of the resurrection that occurs. That purpose and ultimate destiny of humankind in the world was changed by this, by changed by this entire event. That's the deep, most powerful meaning of the Lord's Supper. And that's what it means about feeding the world spiritually. And this was a symbolic move on Christ's part. And then the third, maybe most incredible thing that happened that night was the new commandment, the new commandment, the commandment, the love commandment. This was the home run the absolute home run, as described in John 13, verses 34 and 35. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. So as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. He wanted them to, to do this, to act in this way, to love in this way, so that everyone would recognize by seeing this that yes, they are Christians. They are following this example. They are Christians in the way that they love, in the way that they treat others. In this way, even just hours before his death, Christ was the ultimate teacher and minister as he was both foot washing, articulating the new commandment, as well as the demonstration of the Lord's Supper. Others will see you as Christians. You know, this holds true today. It holds true within Volunteers of America, within our Church Without Walls. I see all of you following that commandment with your work that you do every day for us. When I visit programs, I can look in the eyes and always know I'm with a person that is following the ministry of Volunteers of America and is working in our ministry because I see the love in your eyes. I see the love that you manifest and project on to the world. 
That's, that's our ministry. That's our church without walls. And there's no condescending ever. It's always more by the grace of God go I that I could be in the circumstance of needing to access our services. There's always that humility. You bring that with you. These are the messages from the events of Monday, Thursday that truly then sets the stage for that, yes, most powerful event in the history of mankind, the resurrection of Christ. Christ gave us everlasting life and hope, and he did it by sharing examples, examples that we could do daily on earth right here in the way we serve others. The love commandment actually states without question that, yes, we are in the love business. He wanted all, all people to be in the love business. We have adopted that at Volunteers of America and at our Church Without Walls is, is our own commandment, if you will, but it was first given by Christ, meant to be given for the entire world. So as we go forward, as you go forward over the next few days, you need safe refuge, your safe refuge to draw strength and inspiration from recommitting to our faith. We need this. These holy days, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Easter Sunday, it's just what we need to reclaim our lives, starting first with reclaiming our faith. Shall we pray? Dear Lord, we need you now more than ever. Help us to follow your commandment to love one another and demonstrate that by our actions, just as you did. May our faith be strengthened through the coming days of worship, prayer, and inspiration. Shall we seek to change humankind by following your example? In Christ's name we pray, amen. Greetings, everyone. We hope that you are enjoying this Monday, Thursday service. On the night before his death, Jesus had a meal with his friends. He wanted them to know how important it would be for them to love each other and that they would not be left alone without hope for the future. Today, we meet together as friends of Jesus who has invited us to share in this meal. We remember that the faith has been passed on to us by those in every generation who dared to follow him. We remember too that we belong to a diverse family of Christians of every kind. Let us remember to love and honor each other as Christ loves us. Let us put aside division and hatred as we reflect on God's righteousness and goodness. Revelations 3 verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and eat with him, and he with me. Join me in this prayer. Loving God, even now, we do not know how far we have turned away from you. Bring us back. Send your spirit into our lives. Disturb our complacency. Expose our faults. Drive out our pride and selfishness. Help us put right the things we have done wrong. Make us willing to forgive those who have wronged or hurt us. Clear away our grudges and our bitterness. Demolish the walls we have built between us. Freshen our lives with your presence and help us to live in love and peace with all people. Now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Well, this is an open table invitation for all who wish to join us in remembering Christ's sacrifice for humanity. It is both a public act binding us in all kingdom community and a private experience between God Almighty and ourselves. When Jesus took bread and wine, he gave new meaning to commonplace things. In the same way, God can use and transform the everyday lives of ordinary people. Let us offer ourselves and our gifts to be part of God's purpose for the world. And now if you have your communion uh, items with you, this is the time that we'll take them together. Let us now take our bread 
as a symbol of Christ's body broken for us. Let us take our cup and remember that the blood of Jesus Christ was shed because he loved us. May his peace be with you. Thank you for joining us for communion. Weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, the Lord won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to try all. My God will never fail. My God will never fail. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to the Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see I know how this story is. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to the Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle. Thank you so much for attending today's worship service. We hope that you have enjoyed your experience together. We had a great time. I'm so thankful for everyone who took the time to participate in this worship, this Maundy Thursday worship service, I should say. I'm so grateful for Mike King and Sophie Berry and Minister Teresa Alfaro in our Northern Rockies affiliate and our wonderful uh, psalmist who's given us these musical selections on today. 
We want you to stay connected to our ministry, and it's very easy to do. You can connect with your local affiliates ministry department and bring your gifts, your skills, your talents to our ministry so that we can continue to serve our nation with love and inspiration. But we also want you to be a good steward of the resources that God has blessed you with, and we want you to support our ministry today. It's really easy to do. Just visit voa.org forward slash support ministry. Again, that's voa.org forward slash support ministry where you can support our ministry. A small gift of any kind can go a really long way in continuing to push inspiration and love across our nation. Well, we've had a great time together today and I wanna close our time with just a quick word of prayer. Let us pray together. God, we thank you today for this Maundy Thursday worship experience. But more importantly, we thank you for the sacrifice that you've made for us. And as we go into this holy weekend, I pray that we will have time to reflect on your grace and your love for all of us so that we can show that grace and love to others. We're so thankful for the ability to connect in spite of the circumstances. And we pray that you will continue to bless the work of Volunteers of America and our ministry of service. It's in your holy name we pray, amen. Thank you again for attending our Maundy Thursday worship experience, and we look forward to seeing you at our next, next national office worship service. Take care.